a royal feast. Introducing Kaiseki Riori, Kaiseki Riori. It's not just a meal, it's an experience. A symphony of flavors, textures, colors, all meticulously arranged. Imagine the freshest fish plucked from the sea just hours ago. Picture delicate vegetables grown with care and precision. This is Kaiseki, the pinnacle of Japanese cuisine. Born in the imperial courts, this cuisine is about more than just food. It's about art, it's about seasonality, it's about respect for ingredients and tradition. Kaiseki is a dance between chef and diner, each dish a carefully choreographed step in a culinary performance. Don't expect huge portions or gut-busting flavors. This is about subtlety, about nuance. It's about appreciating the delicate balance of taste and texture. Every bite is a journey, every sip a revelation. This is food that engages all your senses. From humble origins to imperial tables, the history of Kaiseki. Kaiseki's roots are surprisingly humble. It started centuries ago with simple meals served at tea ceremonies. Think rice, miso soup, maybe some pickled vegetables. But over time, things got more elaborate. As the samurai rose to power, so did the complexity of Kaiseki. It became a way to impress, a display of wealth and refinement. By the Edo period, Kaiseki had reached its peak. It was the food of the elite served in grand castles and palaces. Rules were codified, traditions established. The order of dishes, the presentation, the ingredients themselves, all carefully dictated. This wasn't just dinner, this was a ritual. Nature's bounty, the ingredients of Kaiseki. Forget your supermarket produce. Kaiseki is all about seasonality. Chefs spend months planning their menus, sourcing the absolute best ingredients at their peak. Spring, expect tender bamboo shoots and delicate cherry blossom accents. Autumn brings earthy mushrooms and vibrant maple leaves. The ingredients don't just flavor the dish, they tell a story. Seafood is king in Kaiseki. But we're not talking fish sticks and tartar sauce. Think glistening slices of sashimi, so fresh you can practically taste the ocean. Delicate pieces of uni, creamy and briny. Perhaps a perfectly grilled piece of fish seasoned with just a touch of salt. It's about showcasing the natural flavors. Section four, the art of precision, preparing kaiseki raiori. Cooking kaiseki isn't for the faint of heart. It's a meticulous process, requiring years of training and a deep understanding of flavor. Chefs are like artists, wielding their knives with precision and grace. Every slice, every dice, every garnish has its place. Presentation is paramount. Dishes are arranged like miniature landscapes with careful attention to color, texture and shape. Timing is everything. Each dish must be prepared and served at its peak. The soup should be steaming, the sashimi ice cold, the rice perfectly cooked and seasoned. It's a symphony of flavors and textures, all coming together in perfect harmony. Section 5, a culinary pilgrimage, the global appeal of Kaiseki. Kaiseki was once a secret, hidden away in exclusive restaurants and private homes, but the world has taken notice. Chefs around the globe are incorporating Kaiseki principles into their own cooking. The focus on seasonality, the meticulous plating, the respect for ingredients, it's an approach that transcends borders. But to truly experience Kaiseki, you have to go to the source. Japan is home to some of the world's best kaiseki restaurants. From Michelin-starred temples of gastronomy to humble family-run establishments. It's an investment to be sure. But for those seeking a culinary adventure, a journey into the heart of Japanese cuisine, kaiseki is an experience that will stay with you long after the last bite.